Hello, I'm Tiffany Parks, and this is A Bittersweet Moment with Katie Sewell. Hello, this is The Bittersweet Life. I'm Katie Sewell, and this is your midweek bittersweet moment. And today I am joined by Kate Wheeler. She's a cartoonist formerly of Seattle, recently moved to Rome, and she's a frequent contributor to the Nib and the Washington Post. Her illustrations and comics have been featured in several magazines and publications, and she's working on a few graphic novels. Thanks so much for joining me. Thank you for having me. It's so nice to to talk to you and to meet you. Yeah, it's so fun to meet you. So your comics... Uh, in the Washington Post were sent to me by several listeners. Uh, I mentioned to you when I asked you to do an interview, but I have to give credit to Greg. He was the first one to send it over. So thank you, Greg. Well, um, thank you, Greg. Yeah. Yeah. And and one of those comics, um, I think it's the very first one in the series that you do, is titled, I Dreamed of Moving to Rome During the Pandemic. Here's How I Made It a Reality. A first in a series about moving to Italy. Tell me about that dream. Was it always Rome? It's actually really funny, and I, I hope I don't get any any hate for this, but I was just talking to my partner, Trent, earlier tonight about like, oh, I, you know, listening to the podcast and listening to people talk about their dream of moving to Italy, and a little backstory for those of you who don't know me, which I assume is quite a few people, but my parents are actually the impetus for moving to Rome. They live in Ascoli Piceno, which is in the Marche region. And they love Italy. They love Italy so much. There are so many things to love. So we've been visiting them for, I guess, six years now. You know, we come sometimes in the spring or in the fall. I remember on one of our recent visits, this was pre-pandemic, and I think it was in September because to me, which is laughable now, it was so hot. It was so hot. <laughs> yeah. And it was September. And I'm from Seattle. So like my breaking point is, is quite low. But I remember we were walking around Germany. And I was like, I think it's so amazing that they've moved here. And we kind of looked at each other and I was like, but I don't think I would ever want to live here. And here we are. Mm-hmm. Um, I mean, I, and I love Rome. Rome has grown so much on me, but it is really funny to look back at that Kate of like five years ago. And, you know, it's the time you visit, it, it's the place you visit. And you could totally see someone just visiting and being in Germany where it's very hot. I mean, mm-hmm. and being like, huh, this is not the the Trevi Fountain. This is not the Rome that I envisioned, maybe. Yes. Uh, if you're in Germany, you're getting the very vivid grittiness of Rome. Yeah. The chaoticness of Rome, certainly. It's Which not... actually has, it's grown on me. I mean, I Rome, you know, you say it's gritty. Rome is a very gritty city. You know, it's it doesn't make it easy for you. I feel like it's a very challenging city, but after about six months of being here, I kind of feel like I'm on my feet a little bit, and it feels like a good challenge rather than every day being like, okay, here is a new public toilet. How does this one flush? I do not know. <laughs> yeah. Every time I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> That's so true. So I'm curious, in that very first comic, for instance, you're referencing the pandemic and being locked in your Seattle home and how small it feels after time and how that gets you sort of thinking bigger about what else or where else could we be. Do you think that you would have ended up where you are if the pandemic hadn't happened? We talk about that a lot. I think about that a lot because it really made everything so much more, it made things so much smaller and made things so much bigger at the same time. It made my world feel very small. I mean, I we lived in the central district and I by the end of really the first two years of the pandemic, knew the neighborhood just like back of my hand. Like, yep, and there is the squirrel that lives there. Here is the dog. Like, it made everything feel so small. And I'm very privileged. Like, we had a house. We had friends that we were able to make a little pod with whom I I miss dearly. But I really, it felt like if I do not get out of here and go see something different and go be somewhere different, it made it feel so real and so necessary in a way that I don't think it would have if the pandemic had not happened. I think I probably could have made excuses to not move abroad for years because it's really easy. You know, you get a community. We had a wonderful community in Seattle it's pretty easy to just continue to make excuses to not do something 
yeah, one of the few silver linings of the pandemics that it, it was really like, is this the rest of your, you know, to quote Mary Oliver, your, your one and beautiful life. And even though I love Seattle and I, I do really miss Seattle, especially when it's, <laughs> it's 100 <laughs> degrees here. I'm really, I'm really happy we did it, even though it was terrifying. So how long have you been there now? Six months. I, th- I think uh, we got here February 1st. So yeah, it's about six months. And are you yeah. intending to stay? Is this like your, you know, or are you there in the sense of like, well, you know, we could be here for a year, we could be here for two years? Yeah, big, big question. I think, yeah, uh, it depends on so many things. Unfortunately, I don't have any Italian genealogy. So no, none of that citizenship is available to me, sadly. And we're here, you know, we're going to language school every day. I hope that we can stay longer. I don't know how we'll do that. It's such a weird kind of moment in our life because we're just kind of saying like, we'll be here for a year. And after that, I do not know. Mm -hmm. I do not know what will happen. And I try to be comfortable with that, but I I still think about it every day. Mm -hmm. It, It kind of looms, especially at the six month mark, because now I finally feel like I can kind of enjoy being here not not that there weren't things to be enjoyed in the first six months but I it really felt like being thrown into the deep end with learning a new language and a new neighborhood and a new culture and the bureaucracy and the urgency at which they really need you to get these documents to them um, (laughs) that feel impossible Mm -hmm. Uh, it's a little less urgent now and I finally feel like we can just really enjoy the city but that question kind of looms over our heads of like what is the end of this and I I do not know what the answer is that's part of the excitement I guess and part of the fuel for the art that that you'll make out of this experience certainly yes so in researching how to get there what was the best advice or what did you come across that made you feel like it was possible I know you did tons and tons of looking into where and what and how but yeah I mean I think credit goes to my parents just for showing me that it was possible. They moved to Ascoli, I think six years or maybe seven years ago. So many people move abroad every year, but when it's kind of your own family and you see how much work goes into it and how scary it is to leave your community and, and find a new place, it made it very real for me. I was like, oh, but my parents can do it. Surely I can do it. But, you know, there's all the little things of figuring out which visa you need to get. And, you know, those are the kind of boring things. But I think the most important part was just seeing someone in my life who did it and seeing, of course, there were so many challenges, but they're so happy having those, you know, phone calls with my dad every week of how excited he is about how cheap the produce here is like that Mm -hmm. (laughs) his like source of happiness in life is sending us pictures of the produce and being like it was the euro (laughs) yeah all right Uh, lettuce twice the size of my head oh yeah yeah you know well for the curious people that are thinking about doing what you are doing what visa are you on since you um don't have any heritage that you can draw on yeah we're on uh student visas and I think it's really great because it does require us to go to classes, which if you're going to live in Italy, you need to learn the language. That's just part of the, it's a huge part of the culture and something that I love. It's something that I love and it is also my biggest challenge because the language here is is so beautiful and also so difficult to me. My partner is faring a little bit better um, because I think he really likes that kind of thing just getting down and studying the language. He's also incredibly extroverted. And so he's happy to go out and practice language with people. But the student visa is really wonderful because it allows us to be actively learning the language while living here. I know my my parents are on the elected residency visa. So Mm -hmm. they've got the Cush Cush visa. It's like, I'm not quite ready to like retire yet nor do I have the (laughs) funds to really do that so right they're on the one where as long as they can prove they have a certain amount of money they can stay for as long as they like exactly how is it going just because you're an artist and a cartoonist I'm curious like how is the how is living in Rome affecting your artwork is it at all yeah I mean 
I am blessed with being pretty busy. I'm working on a graphic novel right now for kids about sustainability that's coming out next year that is really exciting. So I'm working on that, going to school, but I'm also just really enjoying these comics for the Washington Post because I love autobio comics. I love memoir. It's one of my favorite things to read and to write. And it has helped me really, I think, assess this period of time in my life that everything is new to me. It's so uncomfortable. It is so uncomfortable. But I just haven't had that in so long because while the pandemic was uncomfortable and in a lot of anxious and stressful ways, it was not really moving me as a person. I wasn't learning anything new except, I guess, how uh, how terrified I truly could become <laughs> by the news. <laughs> but uh, here I'm I'm really I'm pushed all the time. And that learning of new things has really inspired me to like want to write about it. It's you know, I'm in my early 30s, or I guess I should say 34 is mid 30s, huh? Hmm. I should say it's just now. dip a toe into mid 30s. Yeah. Yeah. I'm a toe in my mid 30s. <laughs> <Yeah>. uh, <laughs> and uh, new experiences can kind of dry up, you know, like mm-hmm. new, new things can kind of dry up. And this moving to Rome has provided so, so much fodder, I guess, for creating new art and kind of exploring like, one of my comics, I, I talked about being a new person here, being like a new Kate. Who am I going to be in this city? And part of that was tongue in cheek. Of course, I didn't think I was going to become a completely new person. But it is interesting to step back a little and, and watch myself almost do some really hard stuff. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and uh, obviously, I mean, at, just at face value, the city, the city is beautiful. The city is old. The city is awe-inspiring and magic in a way that I don't think any cities in the United States could touch. Now mm-hmm. I really sound like my dad. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's fair to say that that's true. <laughs> yes, yes. There's so much to discover in Rome. I only lived there for a year, and I basically left feeling like I barely scratched the surface of everything that there was to see or do there. Yeah. But do you find that certain things are drawing your attention or are there certain elements of the city that captivate you more than other things? Of course, the beautiful monuments and the, I should say, not obvious, but the beloved by everyone, you know, the Trevi Fountain Perimide, which is just a giant pyramid in the middle of a neighborhood, Mm -hmm. uh, which is fun. Those are beautiful. And every time we go by them on the bus or the Coliseum, the Coliseum gets me every time. I'm just like, does ever, do you see how big this is? This is huge. Mm-hmm. And you're just driving by it. It's huge. <laughs> um, but more so like the little neighborhoods, like I've really fallen in love with um, Pinato, which is kind of like a, an artsy neighborhood. I've made a few friends in the comic scene here, which has been so lovely. And it's, it's just been really great to find neighborhoods where Italians are living. I have nothing against tourists. I am basically a tourist, like a permanent tourist. But my first, our first five months here, we lived in Trastevere, which is beautiful. But it started to feel like I I never really got to know anyone because everyone was so transient there because it is such a popular destination. And we recently moved to San Giovanni, uh, which is a very... To me, my impression of being here a month is that it's a place where Italians live. And I'm just really enjoying kind of being a part of the stream of Romans who take the metro every day and go about Mm -hmm. their hours, like talking on the phone, on the bus, and getting gelato, and going to the park with their dogs, and learning how to live here like a Roman is is amazing. Yeah, that's really great. Well, I hope that you will um, keep in touch Maybe let us know three months from now, six months from now, how it's going, how it's going. I'd be happy to give you an update. If I survive the summer, I will will definitely hit you up. That's the real test. If I can get through a Roman summer and still love the city. (laughs) That's true. It's not for the faint of heart. Yeah, there's actually an episode recently, I don't know if you saw it, where Tiffany gives tips on how to survive the heat wave in the Roman summer. So give it. Yeah, it's very, very helpful. I did listen (laughs) and I... I agreed with all of them and I laughed because I, 
being from Seattle, at first when it was really hot, I had a lot of FOMO. Like I would look out the window and I would be like, I should really be out there. I got to be out there <laughs> doing stuff. And now we have air conditioning in the apartment. And I'm like, from noon to five, I will be inside doing nothing, maybe mm-hmm. taking a nap. And mm-hmm. then the world opens up after six. Great. <laughs> it's so true. Yes, yeah, so true. Because for those of you who do not know, if you live in Seattle and it's dark all the time, which it pretty much is, the moment it's sunny, you have an obligation to be outside yeah. all day Everyone's long. out with those short shorts and those <laughs> flip flops. That's right. That's right. Yeah. Playing Frisbee. You got to get out yes. there. <laughs> exactly. Uh, yes. Well, okay. I, I look forward to checking in and seeing how it's going when you're further down the line. Thank you Great. so yeah. much. And, and Kate, if they want to find, I'll put a link to the, the comic, the first one of these comics in the show notes. But if people want to find or find it easily, do you have any tips? Yeah, uh, you can definitely follow my, my Instagram. My art Instagram is K-A-G Wheeler. Uh, and then that will also link you to just my Rome Instagram. I didn't want to inundate people who were here for the art with my obnoxious pictures of delicious pasta. But uh, ciao <laughs> underscore Kate is my Italy Instagram. Very nice. Yeah. All right. Well, we'll leave it there. And until next time, this is The Bittersweet Life. I'm Katie Sewell. The Bittersweet Life is produced and edited by me, Katie Sewell. My co-host is Tiffany Parks. If Rome is in your travel plans, be sure to arrange a historical tour with Tiffany. To set it up, send us a note through the Contact Us page at thebittersweetlife.net. Also, you could sponsor this show and reach thousands of engaged thinkers and travel lovers all over the world. Send us a note at thebittersweetlife.net to get the conversation started. Our logo is designed by Jody Rick at the Lost Laboratory web help from Drew Atkins. And this show continues when listeners support it. Tell a friend to subscribe, write us a review, and like you would with any other art you appreciate, tip your podcaster. Don't steal the tea. Find ways to toss a donation in the hat at thebittersweetlife.net. Thank you. And thanks for spending the summer in Rome with us.